Selanjutnya, uh, jadi malam ini saya pengen live ya, pengen live nonton uh, ini yang udah lama banget ini uh, belum terlaksana ya. Uh, harusnya waktu itu setelah selesai nonton film-film karya Tan Sri P. Ramli, tapi memang belum selesai semua sebenarnya. Uh, waktu itu harusnya udah nonton ini, cuma kayaknya keduluan Mbak Yes Rizky ya. Uh, jadi saya belum nonton sendiri, makanya saya pengen nonton sendiri. Ini secara live ini buat uh, apa ya mengingat kembali lah ya film-film kemarin yang udah kita tonton bareng-bareng jadi uh, saya pengen nontonnya sendiri tanpa didampingi Mbak Yes yang memang sudah nonton duluan oke okay, langsung aja nggak usah berlama-lama ini saya aduh kayaknya udah antusias banget ya pengen nonton lagi film-film klasik karena kemarin udah banyak banget yang request dari teman-teman semuanya uh, nanti insya Allah lah ya insya Allah Uh, setelah selesai nonton biografi dari uh, Allah Yarham Tan Sri P. Ramli ini, nanti kita lanjutkan lagi request-request uh, nonton film-film klasik. Oke, okay, langsung aja. Ini live. <laughs> Jadi, apapun ekspresi saya nanti ya, ini benar-benar tanpa edit, tanpa di-cut ya teman-teman ya. Oke, okay. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Aduh, deg saya. Ini kayaknya kangen banget saya sama karya-karya beliau. Nanti pokoknya... Ada beberapa film yang belum saya tonton, nanti insya Allah saya lanjutkan. Uh, ada yang Sabarudin Tukang Kasut kalau nggak salah ya, sama apa itu. Uh, waktu itu filmnya udah saya siapin, tapi memang belum uh, saya tonton gitu teman-teman ya. Nanti, nanti uh, apa, untuk berikutnya setelah ini ya. Wah, aduh, saya ini bener-bener deg-degan ya. Karena ini insya Allah nanti akhir bulan saya juga mau ke Malaysia. Uh, waktunya singkat, semoga saya nanti bisa paling nggak ya inilah ya, uh, berziarah ke makam beliau. Karena memang nanti uh, fokus kunjungannya, kunjungan uh, dari uh, acara singkat nanti itu memang di sekitar Kuala Lumpur aja teman-teman. Jadi semoga menyempatkan waktu bisa berziarah ke makam beliau. Yaudah langsung aja, nggak usah berlama-lama. Satu, dua, tiga. Aduh, ini gimana mulainya nih? Aduh, deg-degan saya. Oke. Okay. Mari kita bersinggah langsung di namunya Mari kayu pahkiamu telah turun tekan Darah bukan gadis ini Rusaknya anak punya program At the height of his career in the 50s and 60s P. Ramley was hailed as Asia's Charlie Chaplin Charlie Chaplin Asia, oke Dia bukan insan seni penyulap harta negara Dia bekalkan pusaka lebih berharga, bermahluah bagi bangsanya. Hmm. Kestumi ya, Piramli is only my father. Tapi he belongs to everybody. Itu saja yang punya pegangan. He acted in 66 films, directed 36 film, 35, ya. and wrote 35 of them, dan menulis as well as having 3. composed over 360 wow, songs in his life. Piramli dengan film sentiasa laku. Yeah. 100 tahun mau beli laku 100 tahun beli laku, iya yeah. Sampai sekarang pun ya Masih banyak peminatnya P. Ramley had an infinite charm Laced with a healthy dose of humor Warmth and humility Alhamdulillah sudah kita, kita tonton bareng-bareng semua teman-teman ya Wah ini Senyuman khas Film anak Pusazali My own country, you know, because I appreciate it. But after death, his popularity soared to oh, incredible heights. Yeah, yeah. Biasa seperti itu ya. Ketika meninggal, popularitinya semakin meningkat kembali. Ini suaranya. Terlalu kencang mungkin ya. Oke, agak saya kurangi aja. Biografi Piramli. On the 29th of May 1973, legendary Malaysian screen icon P. Ramli dies, broke and broken. Yang sedih banget. Apa salahnya? Itu kata saya yang cakap dia cakap. Dia tanya dia, ada kata people who remember me, kan? Saya tak boleh faham jiwa dia. Saya tak boleh buat apa waktu itu. Masya Allah. His sudden death at age 44 is greeted with disbelief and shock around Malaysia. 
and throws the country into sadness and confusion. Masya Allah, perindu saya. Banyak orang nangis. India, kutu mayang, kacang putih, cinta jual sayur. Ini saudaranya ya. Saya tanya, kenapa lu nangis sampai ini macam? Ini orang banyak baiklah. Dia banyak tolong saya. Kenapa dia mati? Kenapa Tuhan Allah ambil sama dia? Serangan jantung. Within hours, glowing tributes start to swamp the media. Tidak ada di Asia dan saya rasa tidak ada di dunia pun yang saya kenal dalam dunia perfilman tidak ada terkub seperti piramid. But unwanted and unloved by his own people in the years up to his death, guilt begins to prick a nation's collective conscience. Wah ini lah dia gambar yang dia nak gunting. His films and songs have grossed millions of dollars and swept more than 30 awards. Bisa nimbang bujang lapo tadi. Agak-agak mengingat-mengingat lagi teman-teman. Judul-judul filmnya. Ibu mertua aku. Ini kebiasaan. Masa seseorang tu masih hidup memang tidak diperlui kan. Memang apa tu? Apa bila dia meninggal baru kita tahu. Baru kita sedar bahawa apa yang dia buat tu meninggalkan sesuatu harazana yang suka untuk kita menidakkan. Kenapa tak kau ciptakan Allah dari ini? With regret coming in large doses, there is a clamor for his songs and movies and frenzied calls to have him properly honored and remembered. Ali Baba bisa lapu. Roads and buildings are named in his honor, and P. Ramli is posthumously awarded the Malaysian honorific title Tan Sri, a knighthood in stature. But for a growing number of voices within the entertainment community, it is too little, too late. Mungkin kalau dia masih hidup, dia dapat Tan Sri ini, saya bangga lah saya kata. Tapi sekarang saya tak rasa apa lah. Cuma saya rasa sedih. Sesudahnya dia pergi, baru diagung-agungkan. Iya. Masa dia hidup, tak ada orang peduli. Tak ada orang peduli, ya. It's sad, but it's true. You want to be loved, you want to be famous, you have to die first. Revered as the greatest Malaysian entertainer of the last century, P. Ramli got his big break at the Shaw Studios on Jalan Ampas in Singapore in the 1940s. Known around Asia as the Warner Brothers of Malaysia, it was here that P. Ramli started working as a stagehand. Mm. Within so a few years, P. Ramli was Shaw Studios' most successful movie maker, writing, directing, and starring in a series of box office hits. Ketika itu P. Ramli bilang mau betul betul. Nee, Dato Aziz. Orang datang cari dia tu, tak berhenti berhenti sampai dia bilang ram. Tahun ini bukan untuk cari duit. Duit datang cari mereka. At the height of his career, P. Ramli was not only an idol of the entertainment scenes in Malaysia, but had a huge following overseas, most notably Singapore and Indonesia. He was also a popular figure amongst the Japanese film fraternity. And in a period where Hindi movies ruled the Malaysian box office, Ramli's films rocked the status quo for the first time in decades. Dia memang selalu dia nak ini meninggikan mutu kesenian bangsa kita. Dia selalu umpamanya kalau nak buat filem pun dia selalu nak bikin filem yang bercorak macam kemelayuan. Kalau pun lagu pun gitu. The man whose films, music and charisma inspired and touched the hearts of millions seemed untouchable. But Ramli was more than just an actor. He was a man of vision. Knowing that color films were the way forward, making his first screen movie in color became an obsession for the next couple of years. Jadi orang ini Edwin tahu eh, macam berapa tahun berapa tahun? In 1965, after completing his last successful film for the Shaw Studio Singapore, Ramli left to join Madeka Film Studio in Kuala Lumpur. For the next seven years, Ramli made 18 films with Madeka Studio, none of which had the box office success of his earlier films. Oh, 
recording companies, which had profited so much from his sweat and tears, turned their backs on him. Mm. But even worse, his efforts to recapture his former glory were often ridiculed and vilified by the public and media. Mm. P. Rumley's triumph and fame had once earned him an iconic status. In his final years, he tried desperately but failed to recapture his former glory. But in death, he became a timeless superstar. Tuku Zakaria Nyakpute, born on the 22nd of March 1929, P. Ramli rose from humble beginnings. His father, Tuku Nyakpute, was an Indonesian sailor from Aceh, who migrated to Malaya. He settled in Penang when he married Chet Ma Hussein, Ramli's mother. The letter P in P. Ramli stands for Pute, his father's name. Yeah, Pute. He used this name in a singing competition when he was 17 years old and emerged champion. Believing it brought him luck, he decided to keep it. Educated in Penang, P. Ramli went to school as a teenager at the Penang Free School. Penang Free School. Saya kawan dengan yang kenal dengan dia. Hmm, Masa teman satu sekolah lagi. kecilnya Tapi sekolah lain, dia sekolah Melayu Kampung Jawa Saya sekolah Melayu Belanul His faithful friend Sukadi remembers going everywhere with the irrepressible Ramli Lalu di Penang selalu kami berdua Ronda sana, ronda sini Basikal dia satu saja basikal, saya tak nak basikal Net dua a cheeky daredevil teen, Ramli was always up to mischief wherever he went. Jadi apa yang ada pokok jambu, pokok kedondong, ke pokok apa, kalau Ramli sampai saja, tinggal itu. Putih-putih semua dia angkat. Ramli main nakai, masa kecil-kecil. Waktu kecil lah, biasa lah ya anak kecil. Kami main di rumah macam saya tu meja panjang ni. Dia balik sekolah, dia boleh stand tu. Dia pernah sini. Composer and musician Datuk Ahmad Nawab, who went to school with Ramli, recalls seeing him in a scuffle. Saya same school dengan dia, Francis Lat School. Saya panggil dia budak keroncong. Budak keroncong. Saya selalu main bola itu. Saya tengok dia ada ada orang bergaduh. Bergaduh. Saya pun pergi tengok ramai orang keliling lah. Macam tengok boxing kan. Saya tengok film ni dia bergaduh dengan satu, 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 satu orang Cina. Tunggu lah. Kalau tengok muka dia, ada kena pisau. Hmm. Ada tekan pisau. Untuk ha, kecil. Dia, tapi bila dia dah gemuk, kan, dia tak apa nampak lah. Waktu dia Betul. 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 But the wayward teenager's destiny was changed by a simple twist of fate. Ramli was about 14 when the Japanese invaded and occupied Malaya from 1941 to 1945 during the Second World War. Yeah, the Japanese Masa left three movie camps and post offices in the Japan. town centers Japan. to entice Malayan youths into their naval camps. It wasn't long before Ramli and Sukadi got hold of those tickets. To their disappointment, it was a Japanese propaganda movie. But that wasn't the only surprise in store for the mischievous teens. At the end of the movie, they were forced into a waiting truck and ended up as instant recruits of a Japanese naval college. Mm. It was this stint at the college that taught P. Ramli to speak fluent Japanese, oh. play the violin, and later influence his disciplined work style. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
malam-malam bila seminggu dua kali mesti rai atau mengajar lah wey belajar violinnya malah di sekolah bagian, itu ya masa Jepun penjajahan ya, Jepun sekitar bendera dia dia pasal pada drone dia masuk bagian torpedo Even while Japanese soldiers were committing atrocities outside their college walls, the two teenagers formed an attachment to the Japanese officers in the college who were good to them. Oh, itu. Dengan di luar luar saja lah Jepun yang kejam tu masa sekolah kami sana. Jepun serenda dengar semasa dalam training uh, malam lah kami dengar uh, dengar radio. Jadi kami masuk stok. Semua pedang-pedang Jepun saya dengar ramai ambik semua ni takut takut semua ni lah takut dia orang Jepun ada kiri. Three years after the end of the Second World War, P. Ramli and Sukadi were spotted performing at an agricultural fair in Penang by B. S. Rajent, a director with the Shaw Studio. Oh. He invited both of them to audition as musicians at the studio and left them two train tickets to Singapore. Oh, so the two friends who had never been out of Penang decided to accept the invitation and try their hand at show business. They set off for Singapore on the morning of the Eid Muslim festival that marks the end of the fasting month. Oh. P. Ramli remembered the excitement of celebrating Eid on a train for the first time. Idul Fitri pagi-pagi malah ini ya pergi. Pada 8 hari bulan Agustus tahun 48, hari yang mula-mula saya keluar dari Pulau Pinang ke Singapura untuk ke Singapura. Ada hari raya yang pertama dan pada hari itu saya merayakan hari raya Idul Fitri di, di dalam kereta api. Oh. Jadi saya dapat melihat banyak negara, banyak negeri berhari raya hmm. dari Pulau Pinang terus ke Singapura. Singapura. Dulu kereta api pun tak kata terus bahasa asap pakai arang muka ada hitam-hitam cuci. <laughs> Dia pergi ke kelas. Tum-tum. Jadi kami tutur Hmm. But with little money, the two young hopefuls were living on excitement and adrenaline, not luxuries, as Sukadi vividly remembers about their accommodation. A week after their auditions, Sukadi, unsuccessful, returned home to Penang. Oh, Sukardi gagal. Was still hopeful of an acting offer, settled for odd jobs as clapperboy, stagehand, and later ah. as playback singer. Ramli's patience finally paid off when at age 19, he was given his first screen debut ya. in a supporting role as the villain in the film Cinta. Cinta. Jadi peran pembantu. Former actor and crooner, the late Datuk Ahmad Daud, recalled watching the film with friends in Penang. Bila dia buka baju dalam gambar cita kita ni member ke gelap. Siapa? Bila dia angkat tangan tu, dia ni terlang tang 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 tulang tulang kering punya kurus. Tulang kurus dulu ya. Dulu kurus. Pagi macam tunjuk ke depan tu. Jawab batu kui. Bahkan bila dia nyanyi pula kita nak tergelak. Ai awak soalai. Menyanyi saya cinta mula. Hmm. Datuk L. Krishna was one of the few Indian directors hired by the Shaw Studio. Oh. He gave P. Ramli his first lead role in a drama called Bhakti. Bhakti. Oh, oh ini peran pertamanya ya. Jadi pemeran pertama di film Bhakti. Ini kayaknya udah nggak ada di YouTube tapi kayaknya. Bhakti. Ramli's screen impact was so impressive that after Bhakti, Krishna went on to cast Ramli as the lead in three other films. Their immediate success made P. Ramli a hot property. Mm. He was a good actor, defining a dance. So I told him, don't worry, I'll keep only up to here. You just walk. You know, walk to rhythm. Following his first screen test, Ramli befriended comedian Dying Harris, who had helped him in his early years. Well, for Harris' daughter, Junaina. But Harris wanted Ramli to marry his older daughter, Junaida, a divorcee. Ramli, who hated confrontations, took the path of least resistance. 
In early 1950, he married Junaida. His only biological son, Nasir, was born three years later. That same year, Ramli won Radio Malaya's Best Male Singer Award with his song Aziza, making him a sought-after actor and singer. Aziza, composed before he became an actor, soon topped the charts and stayed there for over four weeks. Ramli rode on the song's massive popularity, with every woman wanting to be Aziza. But the constant attention from his legion of female fans took a toll on their marriage. The next year, Junaida decided she had had enough and left him, leaving Nasir in P. Ramli's care. Mm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Despite having a rapidly advancing career and looking after Nasir, P. Ramli always found time for other people, as composer Kasim Masdur, a studio messenger boy at the time, remembers. Setiap pagi saya mesti duduk dengan Piramli. Ketika dia mandi, Piramli singa dia naik King Cole. Saya kena main tu yang kena main pun yang pakai pakai spin pakai kunci ya. Yang banyak membimbing saya dalam uh, music ni ialah uh, Alayaram uh, Tan Sri Piramli. Alayaram Tan Sri. Dia lah yang mengajar saya bagaimana nak tulis lagu oh. dan bagaimana nak membaca nur. Baca nur. Lama kelamaan uh, dia suruh saya tulis lagu yang dicipta. Dia lantik saya sebagai uh, uh, penolong pengarah muzik dia. Hmm. To composer Ahmad Nawab, P. Ramli's extraordinary gift for music more than made up for his lack of formal musical training. Bisa tengok dia pandainya dia boleh baca not without playing instrument. He can sing. Sekarangnya lagu saya ada nyanyi oleh P. Ramli. I can say that I'm Barul Hakim Abdul Jabbar. Not long after his divorce from Junaida, P. Ramli was back on the dating scene. Beauty queen Mariani Ismail, who was oh, Miss Singapore ini. 1951, was in Singapore. Kami selalu datingnya. Bila tak suka aja, dia akan jumpa saya. Kami dah dah jatuh cinta di bang saya nak kawin kami you dengan, tapi saya tak mau you berlakon. P. Ramli had found the new love of his life. But by forbidding Mariani to become an actress, Ramli had unwittingly set the stage for his oh, own heartbreak. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mariani was being seriously courted by the Shaw Studios, and someone else had a very special place in her heart. After his divorce from first wife Junaida, P. Ramli was convinced he had found love again with ex-Singapore beauty queen Mariani. But he didn't want his future wife yeah, to yeah. be an actress. P. Ramli Akhirnya. was unaware that Mariani was being hotly pursued by film studios, including Shaw Studios. Gak jadi nikah sama career. Mariani. Ya? And while Ramli was important to Mariani, she was not prepared to hurt her sister Saloma, who hmm. on her return from Australia had fallen hard for P. Ramli. Akhirnya sama adiknya. Satu malam tu Ramli datang ambil saya pergi makan, ajak pergi makan. Ramli dia very romantic. Orangnya suka peluk. Saya tengok Saloma tengok macam terlalu admire. <laughs> Mariani could not bear to watch her sister's infatuation. So she decided to sacrifice her own relationship and find a way to steer P. Ramli into Saloma's arms. Adik aku tak boleh cari, suami aku boleh cari. Macam mana nak marahkan si Piramu ini kan? Teringat yang dia tak kasih berlakon. Kebetulan uh, jalan nampas, tengah sibuk kat saya. Saya kejap mata, sign kontrak lima tahun. Saya pergi rumah Ramli. Saya cakap Remy, saya panggil ni Remy. Dia panggil saya Mary. Saya cakap Remy, saya dah sign kontrak tau. Saya nak jadi bintang film. Terus waktu dia sepet. Telinga dia merah. Oh, mau jadi bintang film ya. <laughs> Mariani was baffled at P. Ramley's lack of reaction, but she soon found out why. Dia pergi ke Mr. Quack. Itu baru punya bintang film Mariam. Dia sign contract semalam kan. You jangan kasih masuk dia saya punya set. Dan saya tak mau berlakon sama dia. Jangan suggest saya berlakon dengan dia. Terus Mr. Pack jumpa saya. 
Mariam Itu ibu punya nama sudah tukar ya Mariam ni Itu Piram ni tak mau berlakon sama you Dia tak kasih jangan pergi masuk set dia tau. Nanti dia terus tak mau syuting dia mogok nanti Baiklah Terus tak tegur lah Selamat tujuh tahun Oh tujuh tahun Masya Allah Ramli's popularity as a charismatic actor and singer rose with each movie Ramli gained a reputation as a bit of a ladies man In 1954, six years after he started working with Shaw as a stagehand, P. Ramli was performing before the Sultan and Queen of Perak, North Malaysia. Mm. Pleased with the show, the Sultan asked Norizan Muhammad Noor, one of his wives, to catch the show on the second night. Norizan confided in academic Professor Dr. Wan Hashim that the Sultan's orders came with a warning. <laughs> Norizan, kamu jangan pandang matanya. Hmm, jangan pandang mata. Mata biram itu magnetik. Matanya ada besi belakang. Oh ini yang teman-teman bilang ya. Norizan pada waktu itu memang tidak begitu berminat dengan biram itu, tapi mereka ada seperti arahan suaminya dia pergi menonton. When Ramli was introduced to Norizan, there was instant chemistry between them. Ormai suri berkenalan terus jatuh cinta kepada biram itu. Oh aduh. Norizan became one of P. Ramli's biggest fans. Although the distance between Singapore and Perak kept them physically apart, it did not stop them from communicating over the telephone. But P. Ramli kept his distance, respecting Norizan's status as the Sultan's consul. Hmm, yeah, yeah, yeah. Dan satu ketidakan yang cukup sukar, bersembunyi, dan saya diberitahu oleh Norizan bagaimana tuanku mula tahu perhubungan mereka itu ialah kerana Bil telefon itu tiba-tiba melonjak dan di luar oh, kebiasaan. Bil teleponnya ya. Luar kebiasaan ini ada sesuatu. Their relationship continued to blossom. However, Ramli was apprehensive about the huge potential for conflict in getting involved with someone of Norizan status. But it never materialized. Tak ada kata-kata itu tak tahu. Sebabnya apa yang Don Norizan bagi tahu sama saya. Satu Aziz. Dia mensulkan pun sayang dengan kita. Sultannya sayang. P. Ramli and Norizan were married on February oh. the 6th, 1955. Nikah akhirnya. And Ramli voluntarily stayed away from Perak until the Sultan's demise in 1962. Oh. News of Ramli's marriage to Norizan came as a big blow to Mariani, his former love. She had broken up with him in order to matchmake him with her sister Saloma. Gak Allah sedih banget ini. Terkejut saya. Ah. Aku udah berkorban gini dia pergi kawin dengan Norizan. Aku gak kawin dengan Saloma. <laughs> <laughs> iya, Jadi, udah berkorban. Sama merajuk lagi. Dia pergi Melbourne pula. Nyanyi ah. jauh lagi. Bawa diri. Marriage to Norisa coincided with an exciting phase in P. Ramley's professional life. In 1956, P. Ramley played the title role in the historical film Hang Tua and Hang Tua. wrote the music. He won the award for best musical score at the Asia Pacific Film Festival. It was the first international award for Ramli and Shaw, and Ramli dedicated one of the film's most popular songs to his new wife, Norisa. Oh, ini Norisa ya. With Norisa, P. Ramley's appearance and lifestyle underwent a complete change. She wanted the palace decorum she was used to observed in the family home. Mm. Nasir, his son with his previous wife, eight years old at the time, remembers life with Norizan and his new adopted and step siblings. Oh. Bapa yeah. makan kalau kita disebut, kalau dengar suara tu, tunggu Norizan panggil. Caci, apa ya Caci? Caci, Norma, Betty, Sazali turun. Baru kan lebih turun. Bila pas pas bila, dia tak ni muka. Bapa yang selalu masuk salah bila. But it was during his marriage to Norisa that P. Ramley, the entertainer, was at his most prolific. Some say she was the muse for many of his greatest works. In 
1955, 26-year-old P. Ramley wrote and acted in his directorial debut, Penarik Becha, one of the most memorable films in the history of Malay cinema. It catapulted him into the ranks of more established directors. Featuring his enduring hit song, Aziza, written 10 years earlier, the film won five major awards, a result of P. Ramley's multifaceted skills on the set. Oh, yeah, film Magu Aziza di film Penarik Beca, benar-benar. Dia suka art of feeling. Macam, macam-macam gitu. Saat dia. Dia punya art lah. Beda banget, dia. Dia punya art. Macam, amran. Macam gitu, tau. Dia suka ada. Orang kalau tak tahu, macam Hindustan, tapi... With Malay audiences responsive to films directed by Indian talent, Ramli had to maintain some traces of Indian flavor in Pinarik Becha. Kemudian ada scene-scene yang seolah-olah macam pergi Hindustan, rumah kocu, masuk air dan nasi turun bawah. Itu semua kemarin pergi Hindustan. Oh, ini scene-scene Hindustan kayak gini ya? Rumah bocor. Ramli was not averse to rocking the status quo. And in his follow-up directorial work, Samera Padi, Samera Ramli Padi. made a film totally devoid of any trace of Indian influence. The film's success was a milestone for Malay films. Ini diakui sendiri oleh Shaw Brothers. Tidak ada satu film yang boleh merosakkan film Hindustan. Bila lebih seorang lagi bila yang yang merosakkan koleksi film Hindustan. Hmm. P. Ramli's third film, Pancha de Lima, was the only one he directed in the United States. Pancha de Lima, this is not acting. The script was written by one of the Shaw brothers. At the preview of the film, attended by Shaw Studios, mostly Indian directors, Run Run Shaw suddenly stopped the show. Run Run Shaw duduk depan, tahan, film itu stop. Buka lampu, semua film itu terang. Semua pengarah waktu itu ada, dipanggil oleh Run Run Shaw, termasuk P. Ramli. Jadi, Shaw Brother marah. Shaw Brother bilang, you all director. Satu budak muda boleh buat film yang baik. Kau yang telah banyak pengarah, tak berani ambil film tu. Shaw was furious with these more established directors' lack of confidence and reluctance to work on his script. But with Ramli's success, the Shaws provided more opportunities for new Malay directors to direct movies for the studio. Hmm. The stinging yeah. rebuke from Shaw, however, had sowed the seeds of discontent amongst directors and actors. In 1957, P. Ramley walked away with a Best Actor Award at the Tokyo Fourth Asian Film Festival. This time for his unforgettable performance in the tearjerker Anaku Sazali, where he played dual roles of a loving father and a rebellious son. Yeah. Zaman itu ya, satu Papa orang bisa memerankan dua itu idenya udah luar biasa ini. Zaman itu. Actors, workers, and studio staff turned out in full force at the airport to welcome P. Ramley home from the festival. But as P. Ramley's popularity soared to a new high, the silence of the press was deafening. Ramley sudah tak ada apa nih? News lagi tentang P. Ramley. Pertawang-pertawang sudah baik kok kali ya. His new status as the Shaw's golden boy intensified the resentment of established actors and directors. Oh, banyak dibenci gara-gara anak masnya. Sao Sao ya. But Ramley's career was just beginning, and his critical and box office successes held out the promise of further cinematic brilliance. P. Ramley continued to enjoy spectacular success with each consecutive film he was involved in. Everything he touched seemed to turn to gold, but the stunning pace of his professional life left him very little time for his family. Noriza began to feel neglected. It was not the life she had envisaged when she gave up the palace for P. Ramley. But P. Ramley, marriage to Noriza inspired such artistic brilliance that he was able to make 12 highly successful films. 12 films. P. Ramley's success continued to be a thorn in the side of established directors, actors, and journalists who would use every opportunity to discredit him. Sebenarnya komplot ini pada zaman awal lagi, abang belum pergi ke studio dalam pal lagi. Sebelum tak pernah bila abang pergi pada dengan kita yang ada satu kuah menentang P. Ramley, karena show 
memberi layanan macam anak emas kepada Piran dia kan Sebagai bos kata What he wants Give it to him <laughs> Jangan kata oh ini tak boleh itu tak boleh Oh ini mahal itu mahal tak boleh However, this special treatment was not extended to other actors or directors at Shaw Studio. Anak mas. Despite the backstabbing, so. Ramley once more stepped into new cinematic territory, writing and acting in his first comedic film. Bujang Lapok was Bujang a film Lapo. about three bumbling but good-hearted bachelors who were always on the lookout for love. Aini Ja overheard Ramley telling friends about his new comedy. Jadi cara dia bercerita tu terasa macam tak tengok wayang. Hanya P. Ramli bila bercerita dengan gerak mata, dengan gerak tangan, dengan nada suaranya hmm. Sampai ke shock-shock hmm. semua dia bercerita Ceneman tu ceneman Ramli knew he needed people who were naturally funny to co-star in his first comedy outing So he picked and indulged comedians Aziz Sattar and S. Shamsuddin to provide rare gems of comic improvisation Menyam Trio terbaik sih ini memang. Antio pagi tadi dah ada di susah. Ali Baba Bujang Lapuk. Kui buti kui butai ni. Tio tong tong. Kau suka tinggal di, kau buat kau biasa suka sendiri. Saya pun dah takut bila cakap itu. Masya Allah ni. Jadi dia tengok tu. Aduh, saya saya. Sudin. Pak Cik Sudin. Pak Cik Sudin. Jadi apa yang dia dah tu tadi? Interview sembilan lapan. Atau atau dua leh. The film, when it was released, was an astounding success. Hmm. P. Ramli went on to create two more hugely successful sequels to Bujang Lapo. Fresh from the exceptional success of the Bujang Lapo trilogy, Ramli wrote and directed a parody of Alibaba and the Forty Thieves, based on the trilogy's characters. <laughs> Some of them spontaneous improvisations would go on to make cult status among Malaysian audiences. And although it was the first time, the film still enjoyed outstanding box office success. Teringat keseruan keseruan nonton film ini teman-teman. Remembers Ramli teasing her on set. Open her black piece of makeup like Uncle Da. Dengan ketakutan kan Bila masuk jangan set ni Pilih ambil nanti menjerit Datuk Sarimah Dia kata timbul Terus saya pun tengok dia Nangis lah air mata keluar Dia kata datang saya Oh dia saya penting ni Dia datang lah Arwah Sudah Maji ni Dia kata awak jangan begitu Dia kata Ya tu burau Supaya awak hilang Dalam rumah Nak syuting ni Tapi kita mana tahu kan Ekstra lalu pun Dia ambil berat dia kalau berlakon, dia tidak mau dia satu orang bagus. Rupanya cantik. Umurian. But Ramli may have crossed the line with his improvisations. It was almost banned by the censor board for improper depiction of the Arabic language and had to be redubbed with minimal Arabic accent. P. Ramli went on to win five more major international awards from 1958 to 1964. During which he made some of his most popular penghargaan. But as he became increasingly engulfed by his art, his personal life began to suffer. Cracks began to appear in his marriage, and fights with Nariza and at home became more frequent. Hoping his problems would go away, P. Ramley quickly immersed himself in a new film that took a critical look at the prevailing social class systems in the country. Not for the first time, the film's theme song, composed and sung by P. Ramley, became a bigger hit than the film itself. And while the film was not a big box office draw, it received critical acclaim, validating Ramley as a maestro director. 
By now, everyone wanted to act in his films, no matter how small the part. Freddy, abang nak ambil kau berlakon dengan abang. Kau suar dia nak. Abang tu cukup tangan diri. Terima kasih abang. Dan saya tak tanya berapa harga bayar tak. Pasal saya nak kan arang bawah dia. Ya. Aku datang hendak memisahkan. Dia dah keluar dekat panggung, barulah orang kenal saya siapa ke saya nak tak. Jadi dia nak guru saya. Ya, nak oh, yang nodong senjata itu berarti. His unique directorial style often left a lasting impression on his cast and crew. Ramli direct kiniti, pakai part to part. Perasaan orang dah betul. Perasaan lama pun tak apa. Kalau dia boleh tunggu artis tu sampai satu hari satu malam sampai dapat isi shot. While P. Ramley's career kept soaring, things at home were deteriorating. Norizan's discontentment with her own marriage made her sensitive to Ramley's working relationships, especially with his female friends. So when news reached home of Ramley and former love of Mariani rehearsing songs together at the studio, Norizan flew into a rage. Oh. Nasir, who was eight at the time and living with P. Ramley and Norizan, remembered that day. Norizan ajak eh, mesti dia ikut Mami pergi rumah Maria C. Norizan, kami dulu ada yang kita dan turun. Mar, Mar. P. Ramley had no idea that the former and current love of his life were about to confront each other for the first time. Tahu-tahu ada orang badan besar dekat pinggang tanpa saya. Eventually, Norizan apologized in court. Mariani accepted, and the matter was quickly forgotten. But not by Saloma, who had just returned from her stint in Australia. She went after Norizan. Saloma, by then an accomplished and popular singer, started performing at stage shows with P. Ramley. And not long after, she was auditioning and acting in P. Ramley's movies. Norizan, desperate to save her marriage, was driven to check up on her husband with the young Nasir in tow. This spot check, that P. Ramley punya. By 1960, the cracks in their marriage had deepened. Nasir remembered things getting stormy at home. <laughs> the marriage was in serious trouble. Rumors of Norizan's friendship with a younger actor and Ramley's dalliances with his co-stars pushed the relationship to its limit. And after six years together, P. Ramley and Norizan divorced. Divorced. In one of her recorded interviews, Norizan, who left the palace for him, spoke of her frustrations with P. Ramley, whose art eclipsed everything else in his life, including her. She felt unloved. Dia tidak rasa diri kat Anu ni, dia tak ada sayang benda kat Anu. Jadi dia kata, Norizan, I tak mencengahkan ibu. Dia kata, tapi kalau ibu nak bercerai juga, okey. Tapi I'm sayang kat Anu sampai saya. Yang ni, dia dalam badan ni bersayang kat Anu. Itu masa tu kat Anu tak boleh lah. P. Ramley himself never spoke of his troubled marriage to Norizan, who, unwilling to face her family, remained in Singapore after the divorce before later moving to Kuala Lumpur.
After an eight-year hiatus, Saloma was firmly back on the scene, this time making an impression on the twice-divorced, much-idolized, and newly available P. Ramley. Nasir, who was nine years old then, recalls Saloma coming to take him out one day. He did not take a liking to her and told his father so. Nasir suka nanti tu. Adi amo. Apa yang nak tulis seribu kali tu? I must love my auntie. I must love my auntie. Despite his son's resistance to Saloma, P. Ramli was set on marrying her. He confided in close friend Musalma, swearing her to secrecy. Dia tak pernah ada secret dengan saya. Hmm. Tapi tentang Saloma, dia nak kahwin dengan Saloma ni, saya boleh terperangkap ni. But Ramli was insistent, asking Musalma to help him arrange a marriage ceremony. Boleh lah. Tapi ayah saya ingat dia main-main. Eh, saya bilang siapa-siapa tau ni secret tau ayah nak kahwin dengan Saloma. Dan <laughs> ayah tu jangan pun ingat mesti dia temberang dan ayah juga pasal dia suka pulang. Dia bilang betul. Ramli and Saloma's marriage took everyone by surprise. In one of his interviews, Ramli said that he married Saloma not for her voice or beauty, but because they were soulmates. Oh. For Saloma, there was a fine line between being his soulmate and living with his eccentricities. Dia ni betul-betul ganjil lah. Saya belum pernah jumpa orang macam oh, macam dia. Dia kalau nak bikin lagu ni tak kira masa. Kadang-kadang dekat bilik mandi tu kan. Mak cakap dekat dalam bilik mandi dia duduk berjam-jam. Dia duduk fikir, fikir, fikir. Sampai saya pun nak takut. Kami dia karang lagu lah. Buat skrip lah. Nanti tangan dia macam tu. Menurut tu. Inspirasi so, biasanya datang di kamar mandi. <laughs> As it turned out, she got on famously with Nasir. Masa dia orang gaduh, saya rapi selalu mahu gaduh. Dia orang dulu gaduh, yang kaya saya. Siapa dia orang gaduh, dia orang tak tunggu. Dia orang tak minta aku. Eh, guna you lah. Dia orang tak minta aku. Dia orang tak minta aku. Dia orang tak minta aku. Saya diam saja. Sering hit. Habis dia bawa. Mama ada mesej ke Mama. Habis dia Mama tu. Saya kaya tu. I love her so much. Betul cakap, I love her so much. Tadinya enggak suka jadi Saloma was involved in many of P. Ramley's successful films, but mostly in supporting roles. Where she had no acting role, they featured her exquisite voice. Singing was her first love, and that suited her husband well. Saudagar minyak urat, kamu juga belum pernah nonton. Saudagar minyak urat. Masih selamat. Inspired by his newfound happiness with Saloma, P. Ramli wrote, directed, and acted in Ibu Mertuaku, one of his most highly acclaimed films. The film was not only a huge box office success, its theme songs surpassed the popularity of the film itself. Masih Mahyun. Jadi, Dimana aku cari ini, ganti memang ini hits, apa, hits banget lagunya Sampai sekarang dia dengar aja masih enak Iya bener But it was during another of the film's songs, Jeritan Batinku, where Ramli played the saxophone that had audiences captivated across the country. Even though Ramli had mined the part, he did so well that to this day, many still believe that he was an accomplished saxophonist. Hmm. Ini yang teman-teman bilang nih, bukan P. Ramli yang main saxophone ya, tapi gayanya pas banget. Yang main dalam dorong apa ni ibu mertua aku buat usop bi. Ah tu, usop bi. Tapi Kopi Ramli is a manusia yang luar biasa sebab dia pegang piano kan dia pegang bali kan exactly lah like ini play saxophone the keys semua betul. The film won him an award for a specially created category at the Tokyo 
10th Asian Film Festival in 1963, the most versatile talent. It was one of the highest recognitions yet for Malay cinema, and with this win, P. Ramley's accomplishments as a filmmaker at the Shaw Studio were unparalleled. Oh. But on his return from the Tokyo Festival, the reception Ramley got at the airport was in stark contrast to his previous wins. His return this time was met only by three studio staff, Saloma and his personal assistant, Ramley Jr. He had come home to a highly charged situation between the studio and the union. The union's restriction of working hours had delayed the delivery of Ibu Motuaku, forcing Ramley to pay for the crew's overtime claims from his own pocket. Mm. The meticulous director found it tough to meet Shaw's one picture every four months demand with limited shooting time and lack of script writers. Especially when they close up, it's a pocket land yang paling bagus punya land. Ah, the import land tu, kan? Ah, dia tu tu, dia jaga close up tu. Dia beli land tu, dia susu beli land tu. Kadang-kadang gambar dia bikin nak masuk festival enam bulan. Penalised for the union's actions, Ramley felt that his efforts and dedication were unappreciated. He began to get disenchanted with the studio. The lack of scriptwriters forced P. Ramley, like most directors, to adapt from other stories. But he gave the audience what they wanted with simple but clever plots. And Ramley is a very good man for Chedo. Number one for a very clever, and nobody can see it. Even Lagu also like that. But nobody will know him, what, what he has done. He's a wonderful chap, intelligent. Ramley created some of his best cinematic magic, and although he was far from content with the studio, the Shaws gladly continued to invest in him and gave him bigger budgets for bigger movies. Kau boleh tahu siapa yang gambar yang mahal. Saya tu saya cakap kau tahu, dia Ramley lah. Especially dia beset. Kadang-kadang dia beset muka-muka dia kasi. Dua hari sudah habis beli bikin satu set. Kadang-kadang tak ada. Terrible at handling his own money, Ramley asked Quack to deal with his finances and trusted him implicitly. Kenapa saya masukkan bank? Tidak apa-apa saya keluar kasih nama. Eh Ramley, kau kasih sama saya simpan duit, kau tak hitung. Apa, Mister Quack ni cakap macam budak? Dia cakap macam kita itu macam dia kata Mister Quack kalau mau pakai apa, dia kata macam kita itu macam dia kata Mister Quack kalau mau pakai apa, dia cakap macam kita itu macam dia kata Mister Quack kalau mau pakai apa. According to Quack, they worked crazy hours to complete Ramley's films quickly because they were guaranteed hits. Kalau saya tahu ke, bukan main bagus saja dia main gambar. Duit masuk bukan main macam kau tanda. Abi kalau dia nak apa sih kita lebih kong kau tak boleh kasih. Tak boleh lah. Saya, saya kalau tak kasih sama dia, saya rasa... Hmm. Continued success with his comedic films culminated in P. Ramley winning his next and last international award for the film entitled Madu Tiga. Oh, Madu Tiga ni. Best ni. Sama satu. In 1963, Shaw offered P. Ramley the chance to direct his film color film entitled Senewati in Hong Kong. He was also to direct his fifth sequel of the renowned Bujan Lapo comedic series there. P. Ramli was ecstatic, but the excitement was short-lived. Without telling Ramli, the powerful union demanded higher payments and allowances for Ramli and his co-stars, forcing Shaw to cancel the production of both films. Oh. Ramli was bitterly disappointed. It was a time when Singapore was facing heightened left-wing radical trade union activities and strikes at the Shaw Studios were attracting the state's attention. Bila Perdana Menteri apa ni Lee Kuan Yew dapat tahu about union ni, jadi dia tak suka Melayu-Melayu ni buat union. So dia bilang dengan Shaw Brothers, you better close down. So Shaw Brothers kata dia, you better go to Madagascar. Dissolution. 
P. Ramley moved to Merdeka studio in 1964 mm -hmm. after directing his last film, Tiger Abdul. Tiger Abdul. He skipped the film's preview and saw it during its Kuala Lumpur run in the cinemas. Shaw studio manager Kwek Chip Jian had his own theory as to why P. Ramley left the Shaw studio in Singapore. Tiga Abdul terakhir berarti sebelum pindah ke Merdeka Studio. Kau tahu itu yang panggil sama dia siapa? Itu dia, itu Tauke panggil dia sana. Salah satu film favorit saya, Tiga Abdul. Nama dia Ho Alo. Paling favorit malah. Dia cakap sama Pira ni, apa kau enggak? What do you think of that? Apa kau enggak? Merdeka Studio was owned by Ho Ah Lok and businessman H M Shah and managed by the Shaw family. Oh, tetap di bawah saya. Lee Ramley's absence was greatly felt at the Shaw Studios in Singapore. To his friends, P Ramley was like a bright star that shone on them. He helped to launch the careers of many. His departure left a deep void in their lives. Saya ini seolah seolah mana macam anak ayam bila ni ibu. Paksa saya struggle sendiri lah. Kalau tidak ada piramid, tidak ada lah kasih masdu. Kalau dia sitting, saya cukup hormat dia director. He is a very good actor, very good actor. Dia kalau ada dekat sini semua happy lah. Dia nanti cakap macam-macam dia menyanyi macam gila. Shooting pun senang lah dia semua suka. Bila dia tak ada senyum, senyap saja. The Shores, however, did not completely sever their ties with P. Ramley. They later acquired a significant stake in Merdeka Studio. Dia begini, dia kan Kuala Lumpur ni, peralatan studio, barangnya tak cukup. Barangnya barang lama. Barang yang tak habis, yang Singapura dah tak boleh pakai, baru dibawa Kuala Lumpur. Macam kamera, lighting, apa. Kedua, orangnya, orang belum mahir. Macam di Singapura, orang dah main. Semua dah puluh tahun kerja. Kat sini semua orang baru. Orang baru. P. Ramley had thrived under the system of short studio. Teman-teman yang komen-komen kemarin itu ya. Benar semua tu. Back by a highly experienced production team, he could concentrate wholly on the Tucked away beside a zoo with outdated equipment and inexperienced production staff, Ramley joked with friends that he was working in a zoo and was about to be eaten alive by a tiger. Makan dimakan itu itu oleh. Ironically, Sitora Harimau Jadian, or Sitora the Were Tiger, became the title of his first movie in Madeka Studio. Oh, film pertamanya Sitora Harimau Jadian. He tried to make special effects, but with a small budget and poor support services, he had to multitask, even doing his own editing. The film came out technically inferior. At the film's preview in Singapore, attended by actors Ahmad Daud and Sadia, the Shaw brothers walked out after only 15 minutes. Saya kira sendiri itu itu production job editing job kerja di bawah ini jadi Frankenstein. Ramley would never again replicate the spectacular success he achieved at the Shaw studio. Dia orang janji macam-macam nak kasih dibuat color film, nak buat canggih-canggih lah sinemaskop. Tapi bila dia sampai sini, tak ditepatkan janji. Dia dah kecewa. Hmm. Jadi dia punya uh, creation bila bikin film, dah tak gairah macam di jalan nampas. Ya, ya, ya. ya. Karena orang-orangnya orang baru belum profesional. P. Ramley directed and acted in 18 more films for Madeka Studio until 1970, including the popular Do Re Mi. Do Re Mi. The comedic series was meant to recreate his popular Bujang Lapok characters, yeah, yeah. but it failed to capture their innocence and lovable ineptitude. Laksmana Do Re Mi was the last film P. Ramley directed for Madeka Studio. Ya Allah, sedih banget nih, film terakhir Laksmana. P. Ramley lived happily with Saloma and their five adopted children. His only biological son, Nasir, had married and left home at 19. Satu-satunya anak anak kandungnya Nasir. However dedicated he was to his work, he needed the emotional anchoring that only his family could provide. They meant the world to him. Ini saya 
sekarang itu anak-anak dia. Hmm. Dia suka pijak bari dia terlalu apa tiada ke sini. Nanti anak-anak dia dipanggil lah pijak lah yang sagadi yang picik lah yang si Sabarudin tu kan pijak jajah pijak dengan saya saya sekali pijak dia. Picik picik dia itulah dia kesukaan. His son Sazali was his biggest fan. Otak dia macam dipunyai oleh tuan buat biasa. Tengoklah anak sendiri pun tak boleh ikut jejak dia. Daddy saya, dia segak, handsome. Saya tak handsome. <laughs> Ramli liked to pamper his children, but he would be very strict when it came to music and schoolwork. Dia belajar dengan anak dia memang serius. Baik kira-kira belajar sekolah, mahu pemuzik. Dia tak boleh main-main. Dia bila dah fokus dia pujuk dia balik kan. P. Ramli tried to teach Nasir and Sazali to play the piano, but quick-tempered Ramli would get really annoyed when they played badly. He would thump them both, but according to Nasir, it was him who usually got it worse. Nasir. <laughs> Despite Ramli's domestic upheavals, Ahmad Nawa, Ramli's longtime friend, was privy to the star's other eccentricities. Huh? At home, when Ramli felt like eating a particular cuisine, he would call up Mariani, his sister-in-law, who he was once in love with. Ramli ni dia uh, dia very loving. Dia tak suka uh, selalu kerja terus-terus di rumah macam masak-masak, sibuk-sibuk semua. Dia adakan orang gaji. Dia tak selalu sentiasa make up aja, cantik, duduk buat tating, buat laboci, gitu aja. Uh, dia tak suka bercerai rumah kerja-kerja. Ia kena dengar saya lah. Nah, uh, bila nak masak lauk yang kesukaan dia saya tunggu datang lah masakkan dia. <laughs> Pampering Saloma was Ramli's way of showing his love for her and keeping his family together. This was important to Ramli, who felt that he had already lost one family, his friends at Shaw Studio in Singapore, whom he still missed dearly. In 1967, after three consecutive box office flops since Ramli's departure, Shaw Studio on Jalan Ampas ceased production for good. Hmm. So studio nya tutup juga. It was the era of the swinging 60s and the world invasion of rock, soul, pop, reggae and blues music. The Bee Gees, the Rolling Stones, the Beatles and the Supremes all became household names displacing hmm. P. Ramley's brand of music and singing style. And while local pop singers struggled yeah, to nee. compete with the new musical craze, P. Ramley remained true to his music. The consequences were disastrous. P. Ramley pernah kena bu di stage di Dewan Bahasa Pusaka. Waktu tu malam tiga Ramley, P. Ramley, A. Ramley, A. Ramley. Saya akan melanai. Jadi, bila P. Ramley ingat keluar menyanyi, semua orang bu. Saya tengok Waktu pop di stadium penyanyi Singapura dengan Malaysia, bila penyanyi Malaysia keluar mesti rambu. Jadi orang tak suka waktu itu hmm. penyanyi tepatan. But these incidents only served to strengthen Ramli's resolve to promote the preservation of traditional Malay music. Lagu-lagu macam lagu joget, okay okay combo. Lagu-lagu uh, asli, gazal dan uh, dendang saya ini tidak pernah di, dipertandingkan atau ditunjukkan. Yeah. Kalau lagu-lagu ini tidak diberi galakan, maka Nusaya lagi 10-20 tahun ke atas akan dilupa terus. Kalah sama musik-musik tadi, dan blues dan lain-lain tadi ya. Mereka akan mulai. 
masa berjauhan apa nanti kena bila dipahamkan itulah saya By this time, P. Ramley's son, Nasir, was making his own way in the music industry. Mm. But Ramley was disappointed at what he saw as Nasir's lack of music and acting skills. It was a sensitive subject that often left them on non-speaking terms. Nasir lamented having to live up to public expectations of him as P. Ramley's son whenever he performed. What should I tell I? Must be compared to his parents. P. Ramley made it clear he had no interest in Nasir's brand of music, but Nasir caught him hiding behind a pillar at the Merlin Hotel to watch him play one night. Minta air dekat aku. Enak pak atau dari dia kira ni? Dia jadi tak. Emak buat. Hmm, jadi jam dengan baru baru nak baik tu. As their love-hate relationship continued, P. Ramley felt his son slipping further away from him. Dia dengan Nasi ni kurang sikit, kurang rapat. Tidak duduk, cerita apa, tak ada. Dia yang rapat betul Zazali. Termasuk bila datang di Zazaloma, dia rapat dengan Zazaloma. Bila datang Sabarudin, dia rapat dengan Sabarudin. Sebab-sebab ini saya tak tahu kamu kena nak mengikut cerita Kasma Buti. Junaidah ini tinggal nasib begitu saja. Oh. Tinggal begitu saja. Dengan Pirami. Siapa Pirami nak sedih? Tak ada orang nak jaga. Yang jaga ini. Lepas tu baru diantar ke Penang. Jadi tidak berapa, tak bersama. Sebenarnya nasib sama Bapak Adik pun ada clash. Clash pasal kahwin saja. Tapi ni kita tak boleh kita terangkan. Nasir was not the only relationship Ramley held dear that seemed to be slipping away. In 1968, Ramley's long-time recording company EMI decided not to renew his contract when it ended. It was a big shock to P. Ramley. Is it one that there? I don't think saya tak ingat EMI want to do your recording sebab jumlah lagu dah tak tak laku lagi lah. Hmm. Dan dia orang tak terima. So waktu tu saya tengok muka dia merah lah. I feel so upset. Tengok. Piramli make so much money for your mind. <laughs> Then he dia cakap begitu. Sedih lah. Piramli swore he would never again work with EMI under any circumstances. It was the ingratitude that stung him more than the rejection. Ramley concentrated on his films, doing everything he could to reach out to his audience. He introduced significant changes to his themes and portrayed multiracial settings in Sesuda, Subo and Gerimis, but the audience was not moved. Then he tried a Hitchcock-style thriller in Dr. Rushdie and Dr. Rushdie. even a raunchy theme in Gelora, but the audience was too besotted with foreign movies to notice. Rejected for his film and, and, and tuh. directing, Ramley's humiliation was complete. With one fell swoop, his status had changed from idol to fallen star. Masya Allah, sedih banget. Bila Syur Minok tunjuk kepada Piramli surat itu, kontrak Piramli tidak boleh disambung lagi. Sign oleh Ja'far Abdullah. Ja'far Abdullah, a Shaw organization executive, also said in the letter that P. Ramli was a has-been and his movies were no longer selling. Ada satu kawan abang. Masuk kerja di Shaw Brothers, dapat foto stack dan surat itu apa dapat baca. Memang surat itu betul macam nak membunuh Pih Ramli. Pih Ramli dengan film macam tu, saya laku. Yelah, mereka nak perkecilkan dia. Katalah macam-macam kan. Ha. Shaw lah yang start ni. 1972-73 were Ramli's darkest days. With hardly any acting, directing, composing, or singing jobs offered to him, he was desperate to find the means to support his family. Mm. P. Ramley sang at weddings with Saloma, acted as compere for stage shows, and became a judge for acting competitions to make ends meet. Nasir did not realize how broke his father was. 
Baik, hmm. saya pun kadang-kadang lupa dia Jumpa dia, dia tak pernah bilang yang dia susah atau dia act normal kan Jadi saya tak tahu nak predict macam mana dia lah Dia tak pernah cerita dia minta susah Macam mana susah dia pun dia Dia, dia, dia pendam ke Ya Ini piram dia Yet Ramli's critics were relentless. There was very little sympathy for him. MashaAllah. The Ramli skeptics among the journalists were almost gloating in their review of his fall from grace. Ramli memang kecewa dengan wartawan. <laughs> kecewa dengan wartawan. Biasa wartawan ya. Pun kadang-kadang saya jumpa dia pun susah. Dia malah dah jumpa wartawan. Kan? Apabila ada satu pengkat tu, dia ada dalam studio tu. Dia tengah mengubah lagu, cipta lagu kan. Apabila saya masuk dengan wartawan susah, dia cakap dia lagi. Dia tak nak jumpa. But P. Ramli was fortunate to have found a friend, fan and benefactor in businessman Dato H. M. Shah. They set up a Malaysian film enterprise called Perfima. The plan was for P. Ramli to direct his long-awaited colour film. They brought in five more members into Perfima. The company brought new hope to P. Ramli. Hmm. He had dreamed of setting up P. Ramli Film Productions, his own film company, to rival the Shaw Studio one day. But Ramli was in for another disappointment. Bila baru nanti dah siap, hari pertama, P. Ramli dengan Cengjah diberhentikan, dikeluarkan daripada Perfima. Masya Allah. The majority of Perfima decided that its first color film project would not be directed by P. Ramli, but a younger director, Jin Shamsuddin who had just completed a film course in London. Hmm. Ramli felt totally dejected and defeated. When the film is made, if we are in the middle of the world, it will be made. If we are in the middle of the world, if we are in the middle of the world, we will not have a chance. 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 P. Ramli was at the lowest point in his career. Putting food on the table for his family was a daily struggle. He was forced to do whatever he could to earn a living. Pasal masa tu dia sudah buat kedai warung untuk main maju. So he is living on the pendapatan the maju ni, you know, table money. So macam nama mana tu? Ramli was embarrassed when his childhood friend Sukadi found him at the Mahjong school. He tried to hide his embarrassment by showing his annoyance with Sukadi. Hmm. Dia marah dekat dia, tegur juga dekat dia. Jadi dia pun marah juga dekat saya lah pasal saya tak duduk sebelah dia. Dia kalau kita jumpa kena duduk dia, dakar dia. Cerita dalam setengah jam, lari tak apa. Ni pasal saya nak pergi meeting dengan uniform pula, mana boleh duduk kedai macam. <laughs> To boss, his long-time personal assistant Ramli Jr. approached a small recording company. Fujakwan tulis cek seribu bagi ukiran, buat empat lagu. Ramli wrote the songs, and Saloma's sister Mimi Loma recorded them as Saloma was still contracted to EMI. But P. Ramli was eager to produce his first color film and tried to obtain a bank loan to finance it. But he was rejected at every turn. Orang terkenal zaman dulu susah juga ya pinjam di bank. Padahal karyanya sudah luar biasa sebelum sebelumnya. Dengar, saya biarlah pinjam itu jam lagi atau siapa nak cari lagi, siapa nak bagi duit kan buat. Iya. Susahnya zaman dulu seniman zaman dulu ya. Banyak orang beli tulung dia, kerajaan beli tulung dia. Dia biasa mengadap ni orang ni orang semua kira macam tepis tepis tepis. And even the TV and radio stations had nothing to offer him. Insyaallah. Awak tahu tu saya kerja di M Orchestra di jam tujuh belas tahun. Saloma dapat program. Jadi dia teman Saloma ni, pemain ni, tapi dia tunggu ganti. You see how sus, how sad Piramli had life at that time. But he's a singer, the tennis. They play that part at the program. Piramli show, Gabo. 
Nobody cares. P. Ramley may have had few friends left who cared, but in the bleakness of it all, he found a beacon of hope. P. Ramley struggled to put the pain of his disappointments behind him, but his friend and benefactor, H. M. Shah, continued to support him. Hmm. They set up another company called Rumpun Melayu. Rumpun Melayu. Ramley, assisted by Ramley Jr., concentrated on the company's cinema renovation project and acquiring films for screening by Rumpun Melayu. They operated from an office at Shah Motel, owned by H. M. Shah. But it was a visibly depressed P. Ramley who made what was to be his last trip to Singapore for the Asia Pacific Film Festival in 1973. As usual, he put on a happy face visiting old friends and sharing precious moments with them. His film, Laxmana Doremi, was nominated for the festival. But the reception he got was a far cry from his golden years yeah. when he was the toast of the festival. Ada satu orang pembangun membelawa atau membawa peram di duduk dekat delegat Malaysia. Kemudian dia nampak saya. Dia terus duduk belakang saya kat Singapura delegat. While P. Ramley was ignored by local film participants, those from overseas were queuing up to meet him. Yang kau lihat pelakon-pelakon luar negeri ni, tak ada jumpa pelakon-pelakon kita lah. Siapa saya lah jumpa. Tapi semua orang cari P. Ramley. Hong Kong yang lain Indonesia bin Selamat pun cari perambil juga. Hmm. Ramley savoured the moment, socialising with the delegates who had sought him out. For a while, he looked like the old Ramley who was friendly with everyone and loved to chat. When he called on old friends from the Shaw Studio days, they noticed he was depressed, wondering if people had forgotten or just disliked him. Saya tu jawab Ram, jangan kata mereka. Belar berjuta lagi manusia tak sayang sama lu pun tak apa. Hmm. Asal Allah sayang sama lu juga. Masya Allah. Yang terjawab, Abang, you will be remembered forever, forever, forever. Ya, mereka kata, orang dah tak peduli saya. Saya punya karya pun orang dah tak suka saya. Saya dah tua lah, saya dah tua lah. Dia cakap, saya hmm. dah film Melayu ni akan apa, cantik lagi, maju lagi macam luar negeri tapi saya tak sempat cita-cita saya tak sempat saya kecewa hmm. For actor Aziz Sata to whom P Ramley was a mentor and successful movie icon Ramley's aura of dejection felt strange but he was shocked to see Ramley's true financial situation in Kuala Lumpur Hidup dia melarat kesian oh, last saya pergi rumah dia saya tengok dia makan hasil dengan telur Masya Allah Tambah dia besar Orang tahu dia ambil satu hmm. Tapi hidup dia berharap But Ramley was not one to wallow in self-pity Especially in the company of friends He didn't bear grudges Tapi Ramli ni saya tahu dia Nang satu dia tak nak condemn Dia ni pelakon-pelakon lain ini tak nak cerita tentang kepala dia yang tu pun tak ada. Dia, dia suka happy ya. And then he like to cerita yang lucu-lucu uh, dah. Mm -hmm. Ramli's friends say they could sit all night having coffee with him at the food stalls, enjoying his self-deprecating humour and stories about his life. But they all agree on P. Ramli's one exasperating. He couldn't say no to anyone asking for help. It became his own undoing. Kalau dia ada duit, katakan duit tu ada 200 kat dalam kocik. Satu hari orang datang. Orang kata, "Bang, saya susah ni nak balik kampung. Mak saya sakit tak ada duit ke ya kah?" Semua dia kasih. 200 tu dia kasih. Selalu tercegah. Selalu cakap, "Saya ada hari tu." Selalu orang cakap, "Eh, Dedi, kenapa Dedi kasih semua? Kan ini hari hari Minggu, mana ada bank? Dulu mana ada?" ATM kan? Tak apa. Itu rezeki dia. Saya tak apa. Hmm. Allah ya Rab, dia tak boleh tengok orang susah. Orang putak belik dengan dia. Terima. Siapa tak boleh pukul dia? 
He was also generous in his professional life. Even when he was already a big name, he willingly shared top billing with his co-stars, often reviving other people's flagging careers. It was actress Sarima who was discovered and nurtured by Ramli ten years earlier that still believed in his talents and asked him to direct her new film. Sehari sebelum dia meninggal tu, saya arwah suami saya kita ada dekat Shah Mokeh. Tak tahu nak tahu ada saya dah lupa apa apa tajuk yang cerita tu, dan memang dia setuju. The offer from Sarima and her husband filled P. Ramley with a new optimism. But P. Ramley was never again to set foot on a film set. Before dawn on the 29th of May, 1973, P. Ramley had a heart attack at home. Saloma accompanied him in the ambulance to the Kuala Lumpur hospital. Their son, Sazali, waited at home with the younger children. A few hours later, Sazali received the dreaded call from Saloma. He refused to believe her at first. Betul, Mama dah sembuh tu dah tiga kali pam dah, dia punya dada dah. Betul. Terus dia nak meninggal. Habis kita pun dapat tahu orang gaji dia ada di menangis lah. Sazali, who was 15 then, recalls his father's last words to him just before the heart attack. Jaga Mama baik-baik. Dia kata, jaga adik-adik lelok, jangan tinggal Mama, apa sekalipun terjadi. Kalau kecuali Mama dah tak ada lagi, kalau nak pergi, pergilah. Tapi pergi dengan cara baik. P. Ramli, a great man and a true genius, had died far before his time. He was the original hero of the Malay film world. His brilliance and kindness, an inspiration to many. Hmm. The news of P. Ramley's death at the age of 44 was met with disbelief. Hmm. When his first son Nasir heard the news, he wasn't sure how to react. He couldn't believe it at first. Tapi bila saya tengok mayat di atas imen itu baru lagi. Datang doktor mulu dia tolak mata, dia tolak hidung yang mana, doktor saya marah dia orang buah. Tak apa nak, nak bedah pun, tak bagi bedah. You know, no, leave him one piece dia kata. Nasir said Saloma was in a daze throughout the funeral. She acted as if everything was normal. Dia lawan dia lah. Tapi dia betul, dia betul letih dalam dia. Dia cinta sejati. Sebelum dia meninggal, dia cakap dengan saya, ya, aku nak mati dah. Tak nak hidup lagi. Apa yang dia cakap ni? Cakap, Buat apa aku nak hidup? Daddy dah tak ada. Kata, kau tolonglah, bila aku dah mati nanti, kau kuburkan aku kat sebelah dia. Masya Allah. Saloma was quoted in the newspapers as saying after P. Ramley's death, even if I were to die and somehow live again, I would never find a husband as good as P. Ramley. When Saloma died almost ten years after P. Ramley, Mariani kept her promise to her sister. She made sure they were together, side by side, hmm. in their final resting place. Side by side. Tiba -tiba dia usah dekat saya. Hajis. Kalau gua mati, gua akan hidup seribu tahun lagi. Masya Allah. The sudden death of P. Ramley, the greatest star of the Malay entertainment world at the age of 44, came as a complete shock to Malaysians. For close friends, his death had only just begun to sink in. They started to recall how oddly he had behaved before he died. Jadi saya lagi ni datang jumpa dia. Asal, dia mati rumah. Dia bagi rumah sial. Dia balik makan nasi tak ada. Nasi yang sebenarnya selama saya duduk rumah pilihan ni tak pernah tak ada. Pada itu hari tak ada nasi. Dia selalu baik dengan saya bila saya datang. Hari itu, 
Saya datang nak jenguk Saloma Dia rampas Melissa Umur 6 bulan Dia bawa ke belakang Dia tak nak cakap dengan saya Malam tu dia meninggal hmm. Ramli's son Nasir Believed he had a premonition Of his father's death I dah habis kerja I balik rumah Dalam kumpat lebih I macam orang tumbuk perut Ini I cakap Kena Allah tak boleh Orang macam tumbuk perut I tau Terbangun tau Ramli's close friends attributed his heart attack to the anxiety of a recent court summons. Yang dia meninggal ni buat pasal dia terkejut. Dia jamin satu hamba Allah. Jadi besoknya tu ada kes lah. Waktu dia belum meninggal, tiga empat hari dia jumpa dia lah. Dia kena pikot kan. Ada dia kena saman kan? Jangan buat orang ada Dia susah hati Bila hmm. ni, yang saya tahu, dia takut doktor Dia tak pernah pergi doktor Dan satu dia takut orang saman dia. On the day of the funeral, Ramli Jr, his long time personal assistant was worried Sebab itu, waktu dia meninggal Saya susah hati, saya cakap selama agak macam mana dia kat Yang kebumi kat, saya takut tak ada orang Saya takut tak ada orang Pasal waktu itu memang tak ada kawan. Tak adalah siapa datang rumah dia tanya. Memang dia susah betul. Hmm. Hari itu memang tak ada. Hari dia meninggal memang tak ada duit. Termasuk Saloma pun tak ada, tak, tak ada duit. Masya Allah. HM Shah. Bantu semua HM Shah. HM Shah bagi RM3,000 pada Saloma. Ramli Jr. couldn't have been more wrong. Hundreds of people thronged the house, mosque and burial ground to pay their last respects to P. Ramli. On the 29th of May, 1973, in the burial grounds in Kuala Lumpur, the world said goodbye to P. Ramli for the last time. Today, the memory of P. Ramley is fiercely and loyally protected by a nation that can't quite forgive itself for the way he was treated and will not tolerate any criticism of him. Kau paper keluar hentam dia ramli gini Masih jawab lah tak payah tu kan Orang lain jawab hentam dia balik So dia orang hantar lah When it came out that neither Ramli nor any Malaysian owned the rights to his films Many were emotionally crushed His films could not be screened locally without permission from the owners The Shaw organization hmm. While others continued to profit from his films P. Ramli's family was completely left out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Concerned organizations in the Malaysian entertainment industry helped his family gain copyrights to some of his songs. This is the only legacy of P. Ramli that belongs to them. Mm. According to Nasir, his father had planned to use the royalties from his songs to perform the Hajj to Makkah. Did I plan? But by the time the royalties came through, Ramli had passed away. To P. Ramley's legion of loyal fans, brand P. Ramley is very much alive beyond the realm of copyright. Ramley composed over 390 songs in his life. His music is recognized all around the world. In more recent years, younger generations of Malaysian singers have re-recorded P. Ramli's songs with varying success. Thank 
kini atas kayangan Hatiku dah kau tawan Hidupku tak karuan Dan Saya sendiri pun bila sampaikan lagu oleh Allah Yaham Tan Sri Piramdi ni Rasanya sampai menusuk ke dalam jiwa lah kalau kita menyanyi To his loyal fans, however, Ramley breathed a certain life into his songs, stirring the heart of anyone listening to them. Jadi kan lagu-lagu itu tak jadi modern kan? Sebab lagu itu dah, itulah asal dia. dia, dia, dia yeah. Itulah karakter Hafi Ramli. Karakter lagu Tentang aslinya. Dia cuba nak buat tambah colour. He Ramley had no formal education in music, yet he rose to become one of the greatest musicians in the country. He wanted music to be taught from an early stage in Malaysian schools, so the passion and love for traditional music would be inspired from young and never forgotten. Tradisional asli ini ke dalam dada anak-anak kita, anak muda kita. Usaha di satu hari, muzik lain akan mengambil tempat. Mm -hmm. Karena di dalam yeah. dada mereka itu kosong, tidak ada apa-apa. Semua macam kita mengajar anak kita pergi uh, belajar agama. Walau macam mana pun, dia pergi berapa tinggi pun, dia jarang tidak menyebabkan agama. Karena agama yang telah diajar adalah pangkat telah tersimpan dalam dada dia. Itu juga muzik. Supaya muzik lain tak boleh memperoleh jiwa. Cinematically. Ramley is most fondly remembered for his portrayal of the innocent, downtrodden hero or the charming, mischievous playboy, his own wicked sense of humor often permeating his films. His last film, Laxmana Do Re Mi, was a spoof of his own losing battle for viewership. It was probably the lowest budget film he ever made, but he and his co stars spent the time of their lives doing the spoof. Zam, zam, Ramley's influence on the popular culture today remains unstoppable. Even in death, his magic finds its way into the hearts of successive generations of Malaysians. Banyak yang kita boleh pelajari ya daripada karya-karya beliau dan kenapa dia masih boleh ada entertainment value yang sangat tinggi. Segi-segi dialog dia yang tidak pernah waste Tak pernah wasted Kita pasti dengar Ingat Segar dengan kita Without Piramli, Malaysia would be very different I think He set very high standards For all of us Can your song be as good as a Piramli song? Can your movie be as good as a Piramli movie? Decades later There is still no substitute For Malaysia's charismatic genius Semua dia bikin sendiri Bikin skrip, mengarah, berlakon, kita lagu, editing Saya tak fikir kita dapat lagi satu pilihan ni lah hmm. oh, Tak ada orang teruk banding, tak ada orang boleh ganti tempat dia yeah. Tak ada orang boleh ganti tempat dia Oke okay, teman-teman, nah, itu tadi ya kita baru menyelesaikan uh, menonton biografi dari Allah Yarham Tan Sri Pir, Tan Sri P. Ramli. Uh, saya baca komen-komen yang udah masuk nih kayak tadi banyak banget ya. Uh, sebentar. Oh ya, yeah. saya baca komen-komen yang sudah masuk. Terima kasih teman-teman yang uh, mengikuti dari awal tadi ya. Jadi 
apa ya saya sedih banget terus terang saya merinding di beberapa part tadi uh, salah satunya tadi ya uh, beliau bercita-cita naik uh, keliling dunia dan juga naik haji bersama uh, uh, Puan Saloma tapi uh, royaltinya baru diterima setelah beliau meninggal itu nyesek banget sih itu buat saya cerita itu nyesek banget uh, apa ya sedih banget gitu loh terus sampai tadi uh, Sedih banget saya. Uh, Pak C. Ajis tadi ya cerita uh, beliau di rumahnya cuma makan pakai telur tadi ya. Bener-bener di akhir hayatnya itu menyedihkan sekali teman-teman. Dan bener tadi apa namanya tidak ada yang akan bisa menggantikan uh, Allah ya Rahman Tansri Piramli dengan karya-karya beliau dengan apa yang udah dilakukannya di bidang seni. Tentunya karya-karya yang luar biasa. Karena ya memang jarang sekali ya menciptakan lagu, pengarah film, aktor sekaligus di situ, editor juga. Jadi semuanya itu dilakukan oleh satu orang teman-teman. Jadi ini saya baca komen-komen dulu ya. Uh, Assalamualaikum nanti react lagi film-film piramid yang belum direact. Uh, Waalaikumsalam ini dari Izzat Izudin. Ya insya Allah nanti ya kita lanjutkan yang belum Uh, di react, lalu looking forward on your coming to Malaysia bro, oke okay. insya Allah nanti ya, akhir bulan tanggal 29.30.31, saya ada waktu 3 hari uh, itu bersama inilah, dari kampus teman-teman jadi ada acara uh, itu, apa ya kunjungannya ke Singapura hari pertama, tapi nggak nyampe full, nanti langsung lanjut ke Malaysia, di hari pertama juga itu langsung berpindah, jadi di Singapuranya mungkin cuma, ya setengah hari lah setengah hari atau mungkin satu hari nanti eh apa ya e, sekitar mungkin dari pagi sampai sore lalu e, malamnya berpindah ke Malaysia gitu teman-teman ya wah nanti ziarah sekali makam Saloma, Air Tompel dan Ibrahim Din Doremi semuanya di tanah Kurgulam Jalan Ampang insya Allah insya Allah nanti e, saya sempatkan karena memang nanti fokus e, acaranya itu di sekitar Kuala Lumpur teman-teman jadi Uh, semoga nanti ada waktu, ada masa untuk bisa berziarah ke makam-makam beliau ini teman-teman. Mantap bagus abang, saya suka abang sering-sering live ya. Uh, ya ini live karena memang uh, apa ya? Saya memang waktu itu kan berjanji mau nonton ini ya biografi Tan Sri Piramli, cuma memang belum sempat dan malah Mbak YS udah duluan gitu loh. Makanya saya pengen nonton sendirian aja sambil ya meresapi, mumpung malam-malam juga santai gitu kan. Ahmad Fazli, nanti singgahlah rumah Piramli kalau berkesempatan, insya Allah nanti kalau waktunya ya, kalau masanya sempat ya, karena memang uh, ini bersamaan dengan ada acara ya. Izat Az Izudin, ingin saya ingatkan kalau fakta di dalam dokumen ini cuma 20 20% yang tepat. Oh, 20% berarti. Ilfawas, abang boleh nanti lanjut baca di Wikipedia ya abang, insya Allah ya nanti saya lanjut baca Wikipedia itu mari ini abang kakak Saloma iya iya iya, saya baru sadar tadi setelah di tengah-tengah ya uh, ini apa namanya, kakaknya Saloma ya, mari ini Mariani bukan mari ini <laughs> sorry sorry, <laughs> ini nulisnya mari ini juga lalu Sukirman Assalamualaikum bang, kebanyakan iklannya tadi udah iklan kelima loh ada iklannya ya, saya nggak tahu. <laughs> saya live live aja gitu, saya nggak tahu kalau ada iklannya. Ya. Ismail Fawaz itu YouTube punya tindakan berarti live ini bagus algoritmanya, Abang Sukirman. Oh gitu ya. Dokumenter film orang Malaysia buat, dokumenter film orang putih buat. Oh yang buat orang putih ya, ya bukan orang Malaysia ya. Jadi mungkin itu tadi alasannya makanya uh, yang benar cuma 20 persen ya. Orang kulit putih terima dengan piramlika. Oke. Okay. Bagus di saya apalagi 720 rindu, rindu tengok abang react film Piramli Ya nanti insya Allah ya Ini dari Baharudin M Nanti kita lanjut yang film-film yang belum di react ya Waktu itu memang kepotong Karena uh, lanjut ke film-film klasik Dan juga ada beberapa request Waktu itu film-film dari Hang Tuah itu ya Yang versi lainnya uh, Sukirman bin Sukijan Fun fact Piramli pernah berjumpa dengan Yang amat mulia almarhum Tunku Abdul Rahman Putra al Hadz Perdana Menteri Malaysia Pertama Tapi dia jumpa atas urusan company lah Bukanlah Tunku jemput dia Oh iya iya 
Barudin M menyenangkan dengan cerita dari sahabat Karib Piramli ini. Semerah Padi sudah direkan oleh Bang Isan nih. Iya, Semerah Padi sudah sudah Semerah Padi. Piramli satu-satunya orang yang kita orang Malaysia ingati sampai sekarang yang bukan tokoh pemimpin, bukan ulama dan tak dikenal mengenal dengan pemerintah Malaysia tapi senantiasa di hati. Iya. Saya pun yang baru lah istilahnya. Belum lama mengenal karya-karya beliau tuh aja udah mengenal sekali ya. Saya Saya paling ini terkesan dengan karya beliau itu uh, trilogi dari Bujang Lapu itu menurut saya ini banget lah apa masterpiece banget lah ya terus uh, yang paling saya suka itu ini apa namanya tiga Abdul teman-teman tiga Abdul terus ada juga yang apa waktu itu aduh lupa saya yang yang settingnya kerajaan kerajaan itu aduh agak lupa saya pokoknya bagus juga lah yang sebelum sebelum ini Tiga Abdul saya nontonnya. Musang Berjanggut, benar sekali Musang Berjanggut ya. Itu favorit juga tuh. Musang Berjanggut. Tiga Abdul, terus Madu Tiga itu juga favorit-favorit. Bahkan cerita Bujang Lapu itu sud tahun 1957. Tahun kita mereka tuh, dia kat Singapura. Oke. Okay. Salam, kali kami di Riau biasa nonton film-film Piramli ini. Ya, yeah. uh, yeah, biasanya... Orang-orang yang ini ya Sumatera yang banyak nonton film-film Piramli itu sama sekitaran Kalimantan karena saya dapat cerita dari teman kantor saya itu cukup unik ketika saya nonton film Piramli uh, tiba-tiba waktu itu uh, pas lagi kerja bareng dia tiba-tiba uh, ikut nyambung gitu loh ikut nyambung dengan cerita-cerita dari karya uh, Piramli teman-teman karena dia waktu tugas di Pontianak waktu itu ya di Kalimantan dia memang di sana katanya Sering sekali nonton karya-karya dari Piramli ya, film-film beliau, uh, termasuk memang orang-orang sana juga gitu. Makanya luar biasa karya dari Piramli ini ya. Film-film Piramli, film sepanjang masa selalu rindu untuk tengok masterpiece ya benar. Film bukti, film bakti itu tak pernah ditayangkan sebab film sebab salinan film itu hilang. Oh iya iya. Ismail Fawah, salam Abang Faisal, salam dari peminat Piramli dimanapun kita berada. Korang tunggu sampai istri kedua Piramli, mesti tercengang kalau first time dengar. Di zaman itu tidak ada orang seperti Piramli walaupun di Hollywood penerbit, penyanyi, pelakon, komedian, pengarah. Iya benar, zaman itu. Zaman bahkan sampai sekarang pun nggak ada gitu teman-teman ya. Orang seperti Piramli, jadi sutradara, jadi penyanyinya, pencipta lagunya, aktornya, terus yang ngedit juga itu kan. Luar biasa ya. Salam juga dari Ria Unci. Oke, film Bakti mengisahkan tentang apa ya? Nggak tahu nih. Salinan filmnya hilang, jadi direktur. Oke, oke, oke. Uh... Nah, inilah istri kedua Piramli Norizan. Ya, tadi yang itu ya. Istrinya Sultan tadi ya. Yang gara-gara tatapan... Uh, menghipnotis ya, jangan melihat uh, mata beliau tapi malah melihat akhirnya terhipnotis ada seorang Prince of England itu uh, dia nak kawin dengan janda rakyat biasa, jadi dia tinggalkan tahta macam itu sama samalah macam piramli dengan Norizan oh iya ini, Prince, Princess Diana <tuh> Adam, sungguh saya rindu dengan kisah piramli ini ya Cerita sineman Bujang Lapuk pun best juga, iya. Pokoknya trilogi Bujang Lapuk itu favorit lah buat saya lah. Baru dalam live aja bang, seperti ini saya suka. Ya nanti ini aja lah, maksudnya nggak sering-sering juga live ya. <laughs> nanti tetap seperti biasa, nanti uh, di momen-momen tertentu aja kita live ya. Panca Delima pun tahun 1957 juga, tahun Merdeka Tanah Melayu. Oke, ya ini Panca Delima ini banyak yang request waktu itu. Dan memang belum saya tonton filmnya teman-teman ya. Jadi nanti uh, buat berikutnya. Umur muda berbakat tapi sayang Allah panggil dia pergi dulu. Ya biasanya gitu orang baik, orang baik uh, dipanggil lebih dulu. Biasanya seperti itu teman-teman ya. Karena tadi dengar cerita yang ketika orang membutuhkan uang yang ada di kantongnya beliau itu yang dikasihkan semua gitu kata uh, tadi ya uh, Mariani tadi ya. Puan Mari Puan Mariani tadi ya kakaknya Saloma tadi. 
Allah sayang Piramli, ya benar. Nah ini yang tadi disampaikan ada plan buat film Bujang Lapuk ke Tokyo tapi tak kesampaian tadi ya. Film Racun Dunia pun best juga. Nah ini nanti insya Allah ya untuk berikutnya nanti coba saya cari filmnya Racun Dunia. Tapi tadi kayaknya nggak disebut ya waktu di biografi ya. Kuswadinata watak jiran sebelah yang kena tumbuk dengan piramli. Pemabuk dia macam batu dah. Oh tadi Kuswadinata ya rambut yang putih tadi. Ya akhir-akhir video agak sedih nih ya sedih tadi memang sedih saya. Semua orang hebat ada set ending Tunku Abdul Rahman meninggal dalam keadaan Umnu hampir dibubarkan Sultan Abdul Hamid. Ya biasanya orang-orang hebat seperti itu teman-teman. Jadi uh, kita ini aja lah ke sahabat-sahabat Rasulullah ya itu akhir hidupnya menyedihkan bahkan cucu Rasulullah aja uh, meninggalnya. menyedihkan juga gitu teman-temannya yang dibantai di Karbala itu ya uh, pokoknya semua orang-orang hebat itu uh, akhir akhir hidupnya tuh pasti banyak yang menyedihkan dan itu yang akan menjadi kenangan dikenang orang banyak gitu seperti itu teman-teman oke ini komen-komennya masih banyak Biasa, biasalah orang masa hidup dia hidup lagi buat tak tahu je tapi bila orang tuh udah tiada buat selamanya barulah sedih dan tergila-gilakan orang itu nah ya seperti itu biasanya ya ketika masih ada ya biasa aja ketika udah nggak ada baru dicari-cari seperti itu ya dalam cerita penipin arwah dato aziz satar Ada cakap masih masa ending Hai Ramli Ramli. Nampaknya sem- sampai sekarang pun orang masih ingat pada kau menusuk iya ya. Ini dari Mbak Yes nih komen juga nih. Al Fatihah untuk almarhum Allah yarham Tan Si Ramli. Nama anak dia ini sebiji macam nama salah satu film dia Anakku Sazali. Memang ini kayaknya Sazali kan memang ini ya inspirasi buat film Anakku Sazali itu. Insya Allah kita beragam Islam ini akan bertemukan dia di surga nanti. Amin. Uh, lain angle kali ini Bang. Iya karena live ya. Jadi biar angle-nya tuh kelihatan di layar. Kan susah naruh, naruh layar ininya ya. Filmnya. Apa namanya. Yang ditonton gitu. Cara normal voice dia tuh lain dengan cara bercakap dia dalam movie, oke. Okay. Sukirman Hang orang Jawa ke bukan Selangor, oh, ini. Oke okay, teman-teman, uh, ini komen-komennya udah selesai. Uh, terima kasih yang udah mengikuti uh, live ya dari awal sampai akhir Saya terus terang sedih tapi uh, memang saya Apa ya kalau mengungkapkan kesedihan itu bukan hanya dengan menangis saja ya Gak, 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 gak bisa kadang saya tuh kalau cuma menangis Tapi ternyuh saya tuh orangnya tipe tipikal orang yang gampang mudah tersentuh gitu Merasuk gitu Cuma kalau apa ya kalau sedih sampai menangis tuh kadang agak susah saya teman-teman terus terang saya agak susah tapi kalau terenyuhnya tuh pasti terenyuh saya terenyuh terenyuh sekali di part-part tertentu tadi menjelang menjelang akhir tuh kayak kayak, kayak saya stuck gitu kayak bengong gitu loh kayak bengong ya Allah kayak gitu banget itu ya walaupun tadi katanya ceritanya cuma yang benar 20% persen nggak tahu yang benar yang mana yang ini ya cuma ya sedih tetap sedih teman-teman intinya kita doakan buat beliau uh, Allah yarham Tan Sri Ramli dan juga uh, Allah yarhamah Puan uh, Saloma ya, istri beliau semoga arwah keduanya diterima uh, di sisi Allah Subhanahu wa taala dan juga semua yang sudah uh, tiada baik itu uh, Dato Aziz Satar dan juga uh, Pak Cik Sudin juga ya. Uh, semua semua yang seniman-seniman yang kita nikmati karya-karyanya, kita doakan uh, semoga beliau semuanya uh, dengan semua karya yang dibuat selama mereka uh, hidup Dan masih menghibur kita sampai sekarang menjadi amalan yang terus mengalir ya. Amalan yang terus mengalir eh, membawa mereka ke surganya Allah. Amin ya robbal alamin. Ya udah segitu aja teman-teman. Eh, sebelum kita tutup, kita doakan. 
Al-Fatihah. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin. Ar-Rahmanirrahim. Maliki yaumiddin. Iyyaka na'budu wa iyyaka nasta'in. Ihdina siratal mustaqim. Siratal ladzina an'amta 'alaihim. Oke, teman-teman, segitu aja dan kita akhiri. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.